David has battled through the blizzard in Pittsburgh in the form of the Robert Morris Colonials. They'll visit Goliath's home, the Peterson Event Center, the domain of sharpshooter Ashton Gibbs, the tenacious Jermaine Dixon, and number 23 Pitt. It's the Colonials and Panthers next. Network and welcome inside the Peterson Event Center where the Pitt Panther is getting ready to go in the tunnel as they're about to come out and do battle with their crosstown rivals, the Robert Morris Colonials. Let's take a look now at the Big East standings. This is not a Big East Conference game, but you can see the standings right here and uh, all ranked teams. Number three, Syracuse, followed by number five, Villanova, number four, West Virginia, number eight, Georgetown, and number 23, Pitt. Not picked to finish that high. They've had an outstanding season under head coach Jamie Dixon alongside Coach Mark Adams, I'm Rob King, and Coach, you know, there's some familiarity between these two players. It is a crosstown rivalry game, but you have another reason why this is a very important game for the Panthers. Well, a huge game for Pitt. They're obviously in great position for the NCAA tournament right now, number 23 in the country, but their RPI, they're playing against a very good team for the Northeast Conference, but Robert Morris down the line in the RPI. A home loss to Robert Morris would hurt this team with the NCAA selection committee. Don't expect the Colonials to be intimidated. They did go to the NCAA tournament a year ago. They are the NEC leaders. Part the reason let's take a look at our star watch Karan Abraham the freshman guard he and Ashton Gibbs a sophomore for the Panthers two excellent sharpshooters two supreme shooters going up against each other tonight and we'll actually see them matched up throughout this basketball game Abraham one of the best in the Northeast Conference shoots over 46 percent from the three-point line 88 percent from the free throw line he is a guy that can really load it up and knock it down when you talk about great shooters in the Big East or anywhere in the country Ashton Gibbs has to be a part of that particular conversation. In pregame, he put up 150 shots just to prepare for tonight. I think he's warmed up and ready to go, Rob. Well, it should be a lot of fun. Two teams that know each other very well. Let's see what's going to happen in tonight's matchup. David versus Goliath. It's coming up next in the Big East Network. In the most uncertain times, there are some things we know for sure. There will still be weddings, still be babies, and still be bright futures. That's why New York Life has been helping families plan for the expected and unexpected for 164 years. Backed by the highest ratings for financial strength, we're safe and secure, so you can be too. Give your family the gift of a secure financial future. New York Life, the company you keep. Days on SNY. Get on the New York Sports Local. Your direct line to the day's top New York sports stories. Oh, what a debacle. Packed with debate. I'm just asking. And opinion. Please, big guy. Bringing you to a team of diverse personalities. I have as much confidence in him as I got in road game right now. As passionate about New York sports. Oh, I'm fired up. As you are. Oh, for the love of Mike. Daily News Live, Wheelhouse, and Loudmouths. All part of the New York Sports Local. Weekdays starting at 5 on SNY. It's New York Sports here. Tonight's Big East Network game is brought to you by PNC, leading the way, and by Interstate Batteries, outrageously dependable. Welcome back to the Peterson Event Center. The lights are out, They're just about to be turned on as we're ready for Robert Morris and the Pitt Panthers at the Peterson Event Center. And let's take a look at our starting lineups brought to you by Interstate Batteries. We begin with the Robert Morris Colonials. Mezia and Wigway, Belton Jones, Karan Abraham, Rob Robinson, and Dallas Green for this team that has five freshmen, four seniors, and one junior. So a mix of old and young. And the Pitt Panthers, Ashton Gibbs, you heard Mark talking about him. Brad Wanamaker, Jermaine Dixon, Nasir Robinson, and the junior center, Gary McGee. As we take a look at the two coaches for each team, Mike Rice, we talked about the familiarity. Well, he was a coach, an assistant coach under Jamie Dixon in the 06-07 season, 66 and 27 in his three seasons at Robert Morris, led the Colonials to the NIT his first year of the NCAA tournament a year ago. And Jamie Dixon, what a tremendous success story for the Panthers. 180 and 51, a 779 in winning percentage, has taken the Panthers to the NCAA tournament in each of his years. The Panthers have been to eight straight NCAA tournament appearances, went to the Elite Eight last year, and Mark really has this program rolling. 
no question. When you talk about the great coaches in college basketball, certainly Jamie Dixon right at the top of that conversation. And we talked about the series history. The Panthers have never lost to an NEC team and against their crosstown rivals. Ashton Gibbs and company 27 and, his, and oh, the uh, Pitt Panthers in their home white uniforms. Robert Morris and Colonials in the red, white, and blue. Two teams meeting out of the center of the court as we take a look at the officials. Brian O'Connell, Chris Bieber, and Jeff Clark. And talked about familiarity. Belton Jones grew up with Brad Wanamaker. Russell Johnson with Nasir Robinson. Gary Wallace with Ashton Gibbs. These, these teams know each other personally. And it will get personal here tonight as Gibbs sets the offense here for the Panthers. Man-to-man -man defense by the Colonials. It'll be interesting to see if Robert Morris can take away dri dribble penetration from guys like Jermaine Dixon. Gibbs kicks the extra pass. And Dixon will settle back down, 12 on the shot clock. And a long three by Gibbs, off the mark. Green pulls down the rebound. Now for Robert Morris, a critical element tonight is one and done. If they can hold Pitt to one shot, that's the problem whenever you're a non-power six going up against the power six, you gotta get rebounds. And there's the drive and the delivery by Karan Abraham, and he'll have a chance to complete a three-point play. Watch Karan Abraham as he just turns the corner, takes the hit. Now, this is a guy that's known for knocking down threes, but you can add the dribble drive game, you become a multi-dimensional offensive player, Karan Abraham. And you mentioned that 88% free throw shooter, so he completes a three-point play, 3-0. Three the Colonials have the lead. Now, Abraham matched up with Ashton Gibbs, both shooting the high 80s and free throws, both knocked down threes. Interesting matchup tonight. Wanamaker on the drive, and he's fouled by Green, so he'll have a chance, presumably, here to shoot two for the Panthers. Now, Pitt believes they can put the ball on the floor and get to the basket, and, and Brad Wanamaker, who played so well against Seton Hall, struggled against West Virginia. Jamie Dixon wants to get Wanamaker more quality touches and getting more aggressive going to the basket. 71% free throw shooter, knocks down the first. And here's what's at stake in this game. Robert Morris, a nine-game winning streak, looking for their first ever win against the Panthers. Panthers 46 straight at home against non-conference opponents, 67 and 0 all time against the NEC Conference. Important for the Colonials to get some confidence early. Well, whenever you play up, play against a team like Pitt, you've got to get to the basket, get to the free throw line like Cron Abraham did on the first possession. Stay aggressive. Jones a pull up and pass to Abraham in the corner, misses the three, McGee the rebound. Walk. So Abraham does a nice job back defensively. Abraham, one of those guys that if he were taller or handled the ball better, he'd be in a bigger conference, but he's really, he's a 5'9", two guard is what he is. He really is, but he's a guy that can turn the corner, make plays, he knocks down the three ball, has extreme quickness. There he is. And we'll have a travel on the other end as it's turned over by N. Wigway. I like the way Mike Rice teams play. I saw them last year in the championship game of the Northeast Conference. They play a little chip on their shoulder. They play very aggressive. Defensively, they're not afraid to man you, not afraid to man you and pressure you. They get steals, plus seven steals a game. Doubling down on McGee in the post. Once again, the Colonials recover defensively. They got a mismatch down low. They missed it. Dixon eight in the shot clock. Shot off the mark, batted out, and kept alive by the Panthers. Open three for Gibbs, and he knocks it down. Second chance points, a critical element in this basketball game. Pitt can dominate on the boards, and they will try to exert their size and strength against a smaller Robert Morris team. The zoo here up and chanting, they're loud. And Green is fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. Second chance points for Pitt. As Ashton Gibbs, we saw him in the pregame. 
He has such a efficient jump shot. The ball gets immediately to the shot pocket. His right arm is always in position to lock, cock, and fire. He's got just a beautiful jump shot from the three-point lane that Ashton gets. And you got an up-close look at him. By the way, Green is 74% free throw shooter, hits the first. You were rebounding for him, getting the ball out there and talking to him about his shot and his delivery. Well, it's interesting how he comes out and warms up. It's rapid-fire shots. He doesn't catch, set, and shoot. He catches shooting pocket right up in the shooting pocket and lets it go. It's, it's such a quick movement that he works on consistently every day. Green one of two, so it's four to four. Gibbs will fire again, this one off the mark. And rebounded by Jones. And Rob Robinson, the senior, inside That's and nice. gets it to fall. Great look right there. A little bit of a mismatch for Rob Robinson down low at 6'8". He just uses his size to his unfair advantage on the block. Well done by Robert Moore. They enjoy the 6'4 lead early. Okay, this is a game if you're Pitt. You don't want to play this game in February. Dumped down McGee and hammered by Velton Jones. And why do you say that? Well, Big East Conference play. I mean, you've just played Seton Hall. you got West Virginia coming up. And now you're playing Robert Morris, an out-of-conference situation. Listen, it's equal for both teams. Mike Rice has the same issues as they're running up against Quinnipiac in the Northeast Conference. But you just don't want to play a non-conference game in February. It's difficult to convince your kids this is important for us. And Gary Wallace in for Velton Jones. Gilbert Brown checks in for Nasir Robinson. And Dallas Green has just picked up his second personal, one of the few guys with a lot of size for Robert Morris, and he'll have to come to the bench. And he will be replaced by Russell Johnson. And we talked about the importance of rebounding, and some serious rebounding just sat down. And that is Dallas Green, averaging over five rebounds a game for the Colonial. Robert Morris, the early lead. Crowd filtering in late here at the Peterson Event Center, looking for something to cheer about. Well, Robert Morris is well schooled defensively, as you would expect from Mike Rice, the former assistant to JV, Jamie Dixon. Dixon, the spin move and the soft jump shot to tie it up. Dixon, the guy guarding uh, Abraham, the finest defensive player for the Panthers. And a personal foul on Robert Morris, so it's 6-6, 15-49, gone here in the first half. Now that college is a few years behind me, it seems I've got three times the bills I used to. And they're getting in the way of things I'd like to do. With the money bar, I can move my money around instantly. So when there's more bills than usual, it's no problem. And I use the wish list to put any extra money aside for anything I want. Being in control of my money feels good. Introducing the virtual wallet from PNC, a high definition online view of your money. PNC, leading the way. Enjoy a complete seafood dinner for two for just $29.99 at Red Lobster. With fresh salads and biscuits, your choice of entrees, and an appetizer or a dessert to share. And soon at Red Lobster. Do you owe $10,000 or more in income tax to the IRS or state? Call today for a free consultation on how much your tax debt can be reduced. Don't wait. Find out how much money you could be saving today. Call 800-742-8604. What's important for your business? Reliable data, internet, voice, and video services, a secure 100% fiber optic network, increasing capabilities while reducing costs. No matter how specific your business goals may be, Optimum Light Path can help. In fact, we've helped Long Island's top organizations like Long Island University connect to what's important. Switch to Optimum Light Path and take advantage of our new customer credit. Visit lightpathnow.com slash li today.
push of the select button, get coupons, information, and even free samples delivered right to your door. Optimum Select. Available now from IOTV. Back at the Big East Network, in the Peterson Event Center, Rob Robinson, part of the reason that the Colonials able to keep this game tied early. Well, the size right there, 6'8", over Brad Wanamaker, just able to dribble down and go over him. Wanamaker at 6'4", so that four-inch size advantage really makes a difference for Rob Robinson down low. Rob Robinson is the inside presence offensively for the most part for the Colonials. And is going to have to carry more of the load with Dallas Green in foul trouble out with two early on. And you talked about how maybe this is an easier game for Robert Morris to get up for. You talked about the dangers for the Panthers, maybe some dangers for Robert Morris too. Both these teams going right back into conference play. But for Robert Morris, you know, the, the, the friends we talked about, the other guys, you know, they've been overlooked. They've gone to the bigger schools and, you know, the smaller team in the city, all those things. Yeah, no problem for Robert Morris to get up for the upset in this game. Of course, these guys play against each other here in Pitt all summer long in the Green Tree Summer League. Very familiar from their high school programs. And McGee with a foul inside and take a look at the marquee matchup of the Big East Conference tonight. And we were watching uh, some of this game. Bill and off to a fast start. West Virginia closing that gap a little bit. Well, Scotty Reynolds struggling to score against those rangy defenders. But of course, Villanova has a lot of offensive weapons, and Jay Wright, one of the best coaches in the country. And you saw the Panthers with some trouble from some of their guys on the outside scoring against West Virginia. Gilbert Brown with a donut, and Brad Wanamaker with a double, do double donuts that night for Pitt. Oh, a tough hit there by Abraham over Jermaine Dixon. Dixon's such a great defensive player for the Panthers, and Abraham's got his work cut out, but has five early points. Wanamaker misses the pull-up. Robinson soars for the rebound. Here's Abraham in transition. Whoa! Oh! <laughs> Beautiful move by Abraham. The hesitation. He has seven looking for eight. Watch his left shoulder right there. The low center of gravity and the explosion to the basket. Kron Abraham, watch that left shoulder, the dip and the explosion. LaDainian Tomlinson right there. That is beautiful. Draws the foul on Dixon, and now a chance to add to this lead, a four-point lead for the Colonials. Make it five. And eight of those 11 points coming from the guy in our star watch, Karan Abraham. And we talked about how 5'9 you know, has to play the two-guard position. You'd imagine, again, a little chip on the shoulder, maybe a chance to prove he can run with the bigger guys. Uh, he can run, boy. <laughs> Gives the long three. It is true. So Ashton Gibbs has a pair of threes for the Panthers, and he cuts the lead from five back down to two. It's such a quick fundamental release for Ashton Gibbs. Abraham now has Woodall on him. Beats him. Shot no good. And rebound by Wanamaker. Dixon, Josiah Whitehead into the game for the Colonials, number 44. And Gibbs draws the foul, and we'll get a chance to shoot two. So it hits a couple threes, and then able to draw the foul here. Now watch Ashton Gibbs. Just watch his right elbow as he catches right there. It just goes straight up. The ball goes literally the top of his head. You know, it's amazing. Watch Now watch his right hand. It literally cups the top of his head and just lets it fly. It's the same release point every single shot. Metronomic quality, part of the reasons why he's such a great shooter is the Big East leading free throw shooter and cans the first. Now a chance to tie as Brad Peel has checked into the game for the Colonials, number 25. Routine, three dribbles, spin into the shooting pocket. It's like a machine, it's a robot that does it over and over again. His dad inspired him to work on that quick release by catch, shot, catch, shot. And boy, has he learned it well. And leading scorer for the Panthers. Jones in trouble and he's gonna be called for the travel. A lot of contact on that play, but it'll be a turnover. And that's one of your keys, too. You can't have turnovers if you're the Colonials and Mike Rice. 
when you play up to the Power Six conferences, you've got to do two things. Take care of the basketball, one. Rebound at number two. At least stay close on the boards. The good news is Robert Morris, plus seven steals per game. So this is a team that can get you up and down with their 94-foot game by stealing the ball with their pressure package. Both teams staying in man-to-man -man defense throughout the game. That's what you can expect for most of the game. We might see some two, three Woodalls, three on the way. It is no good, and one and done again. Russell Johnson with the rebound. So the Colonials sticking to your game plan, and that's why we have a tied game. Away, but back of the shot on the way, and it is good for Russell Johnson. A pretty good defense in that half court set by Pitt, but Robert Morris very patient, able to get back a loose ball, knock down the jump shot. Johnson, an impressive looking red shirt freshman, 6'6, 180. Size mismatch here for Gilbert Brown, and a reach in foul. And it's going to be on Gary Wallace. And the sixth team foul already for the Colonials. So you see mass substitutions on each team. Next foul, and the Panthers will be in the bonus very early in this first half. Well, especially in this game, Pitt can invert their offense. They can put a Gilbert Brown down the block and let him make a play. Good pass inside. Taylor missed. Robinson then missed. And the rebound cleaned out by Green. Jones, long three-pointer on the way, Felton Jones. Just a 26% shooter from three and able to convert. Well, that's when you look at your staff as a head coach and say, we got a shot. <laughs> if our 26 percenters making threes, we got a shot. Well, you coached in games like this. And, you know, at what point in a game are you, I mean, you're, you're thinking victory, I assume, coming out of the sure. tunnel, but you, you need to know you can play at some point of the game. You know, and it's usually somewhere in the first half where you kind of hang around, hang around, you get in halftime. But early in the second half, the first five minutes, if you can make a little run and you watch that home team get a little bit tight, that's when you start thinking, you know what? We got a legit shot here. So the great delivery from Woodall to Robinson. Another three-pointer on the way. It is good. Russell Johnson strokes it. Jamie Dixon wants a timeout. Johnson has five. The Colonials lead is six. And you look at number 34 there, the freshman, redshirt freshman, and Mike Rice says he's the most talented player he's had at Robert Morris and a chance to really be an outstanding contributor down the line for the Colonials. Doing pretty well now as a freshman. Well, Russell Johnson, the ball went to and fro here from one side to the other, and Johnson fills in the gap off the dribble penetration right there. And at 6'6", six, six, look at his feet ready, hands are set, jumps straight up, Pogo's into his jump shot. He played very well earlier this year against Cleveland State. That's when Mike Rice started figuring out, you know, we got pretty good freshmen here. Very talented, very athletic. Mentioned five freshmen, and, you know, Mike Rice, when you look at his coaching style, and first, let's take a look at, uh, at Johnson and what he's doing throughout the course of this game. Oh, I and this is Woodall to Robinson and the nice delivery here we were talking about earlier in the left-handed lane. The Colonials don't, Mike Rice doesn't play anybody. He's never had a player play more than 30 minutes a game. A lot of substitutions, and that's the you know, really talks about the defense, and so you see a lot of guys in and out of the lineup, and that helps them down the line as well. We'll talk about that when we come back. 19-13, the Colonials leading. In today's markets, how can you get your retirement plans back on track? Consider Oppenheimer Funds. Whether the markets are up or down, we follow a consistent investment approach. Ask your advisor about Oppenheimer Funds and see how our numbers can help you reach your destination. Call your advisor for a prospectus with complete fund information. Read it carefully and carefully consider fund investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. Mutual funds are subject to market risk and volatility. Shares may lose or gain value. Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. Get your career cooking. Literally. With LaCordon Blue Training. 
You could train as a culinary professional and work at restaurants, resorts, bakeries, catering companies, and more. Call now for a career guide. Free! Call the Le Cordon Bleu School. Call 800-718-1824. That's 800-718-1824. Call now. Let it snow. Let it snow. Let it sleep, freeze, and then let it snow again. And then let it rain. And then let it snow one more time. Offering fully automatic all-wheel drive. Stabilitrack stability enhancement. And traction control. GMC Acadia. What did that Super Bowl loss do to Peyton Manning's legacy? And, Joe, what did that win do for Drew Brees? Well, I'll tell you what. Drew Brees elevated himself to the elite quarterbacks in the NFL. He's right there with Manning. He's right there with Tom Brady. And we're right there with it all on Daily News Live tonight. Big East basketball on SNY. Get all your first-half highlights, analysis, and all the latest conference updates and news from our team of Big East experts. Live from the SNY studio on Harris Halftime Show, coming up on SNY. Surprising early action here at the Peterson Event Center, and a big part of the reason is Ron Abraham. Ron Abraham right there early on, the very first possession, took the ball to the hole. He comes off the screens low and creates separation for the defender. Look at that explosion to the basket right there. Good luck guarding this guy in the Northeast Conference. He's difficult to guard in the Big East Conference tonight. And Abraham with his eight points. As we take a look at our star watch and the score, big reason that Robert Morris has a six-point lead, but Ashton Gibbs playing a strong game as well for the Panthers. And Jermaine Dixon will go to the free throw line. And for Pitt, you know, Ashton Gibbs there with eight points, but when you look at the up and down of Gilbert Brown over the last couple of weeks, zero points at West Virginia, but then backs it up at Seton Hall and plays very well in that game at 23 points. Now, how will he bounce back again here now tonight? And Dixon hits them both. And Brown, he dropped 25 on South Florida, zero versus West Virginia, and 23 against Seton Hall. Now, that's, that's an up and down through games right there. Yeah, as a coach, you'd like a little more consistency, I would think, as they try the, the alley-oop to Robinson from Belton Jones. And that's tough as a coach because, you know, knowing what hand to play with a player, I would think. Well, and Gilbert Brown's such a good athlete. I mean, he's the best athlete on this basketball team. You need his production. Abraham with Dixon now back on him defensively. 15 on the shot clock. Jones left open, launches another three. This one off the mark as Robinson rebounds. Now just watch the blue jerseys defensively. The help side position coming over. And let's see what this call is going to be. They're going to say Jones swatted it out of Robinson's hand, so remains Panthers basketball. You're talking about the defensive rotation. Well, just watch the blue jerseys. Watch how they defend. Look at the backside defenders and help side. Look how they defend on the ball. If it looks familiar to Pitt fans, it should. It's the exact identical defensive man-to-man -man package that Mike Rice and Jamie Dixon coached together here at Pitt. And I was talking to Mike Rice about the fact we were talking uh, before the break that nobody plays more than 30 minutes. Eight guys between 19 and about 28 minutes, and he says it's because of the defense. He wants them to play hard defense, and if you do that, you get tired, and he's got to pull you out. That's because they pressure the ball, and their footwork is so technique-driven. You've got to stay in a stance the entire possession. And everybody's down a stance here in blue jerseys. Great shot. Jermaine Dixon for three. Good defense. You'll live and die with that shot all night long. Jermaine Dixon, a real talent. Now, watch Pitt in their defense. It looks identical to what you just saw. There's the rotation. There's the help. Hands up with the ball pressure. Jones a jump shot, and he knocks that down. 21 to 18, Robert Morris leads by three. Two tough shots over extended hands, but it's like we're watching twin defenses here tonight. And the Panthers, the top defense in the Big East Conference as well, so two outstanding defenses, similar philosophies as you mentioned. Mismatch down low, Robinson matched up. Uh, 
Robinson the lead from McGee out to Gibbs. Three-pointer, and it is good. Ashton Gibbs has 11, and the Panthers have tied it up at 21. Here at the Peterson Event Center, Rob King along with Mark Adams and the Robert Morris Colonials coming through the blizzard across town to take on their crosstown rivals, the Pitt Panthers, here at the Peterson Event Center. And early on, the Colonials out of the NEC Conference tied up. Oh. Shot off to Mark Green back in the game and able to keep it alive. And Dallas Green, two fouls for the Colonials. And back in the basketball game. Russell Johnson, tough three-pointer save, though. And Jones keeps it alive and throws in the floater, Felton Jones. Well, Jamie Dixon upset because none of his Panthers came back in a great hustling play by the Colonials, and they wind up with two. Dallas Green actually did it twice on the offensive glass. Watch Dallas Green on the right side. Why? There's a little nudge that takes place right there, and he gets away with it. That's how he gets positioned and gets his hands on the ball. And then the loose ball comes, and Dallas Green is right there to make the play. This kid was so active during this possession of just going to the offensive glass. Uh, the team jokester, but uh, all business. You know, he's running pass patterns early in the week. Uh, at, at practice, he's a big football fan, big NFL fan, getting ready for the Super Bowl. But, you know, once the, he steps out on the court, Mike Rice really raves about the little things he does, kind of a glue guy. And I think we saw good evidence of that there. And the interesting thing about that, and great point, Rob, the little things really matter for Robert Morris. They matter for Pitt, too. But again, when you play for the Northeast Conference, step up to the Big East. It's that little nudge to get your hand on an offensive rebound going after the loose ball, saving it for the extra possession. Those are the ways that you upset a Power 6 team. And by the way, 103 times this season, non-Power 6 have knocked off Power 6 teams this season. 103 times. That is amazing. And uh, Robert Morris looking to make it 104 tonight as we update you on that score down in Morgantown. 50 to 41, the Wildcats have stretched the lead to nine with about 13 minutes remaining in the second half. And Gibbs twice now has done that with a pump fake and the draw of the foul. And for Dallas Green, that is number three. Ashton Gibbs, so smart. Known as the shooter, so what does a defender do? They overreact to the shot fake right there. And that is a beautiful shot fake. Quick. Gibbs, as you would expect, the 90% free throw shooter to do. Nails the first, and Green has to trudge over to the bench. Foul number three. It is doubtful we will see him until the second half as Russell Johnson comes in to take his place. He even shoots free throws quickly. He just gets it right in the shooting pot, lets it go. See Dallas Green having a seat in the bench, and he's going to have to watch this now for a while. Tied up at 23, under eight minutes remaining here in the first half. Johnson lost the handle. Here comes Dixon back the other way. And Johnson thought he took it away clean. The refs do not agree. It is a foul. And with 7.44 remaining, the Panthers will go to the free throw line with a chance to take the lead. Tied at 23 here at the Peterson Event Center on the Big East Network. What's the deal with all these people rushing to work, drinking their mochaccinos, cappuccinos, chocolatinos? Uh, take a look at this. The Denny's Meat Lovers Trio. It's one of three new dishes for breakfast lovers being served for a limited time. I'd take one of these over a whatever chino any day. Oh, yeah. It's Vegas, baby. And it's the ESPN National Golf Challenge. 54 holes of challenging golf in the heart of the Las Vegas desert. I love this resort. I, you know, I love coming up to Paiute each year. The event's unbelievable. The staff, you know, treats you like royalty here. That's all you can ask for. We had a great time. About as good as it gets. The action is nonstop as you and your partner challenge golfers from all around the country to become America's best twosome. For more information, log on to ESPNGolf.com. You owe $10,000 or more in credit card debt? Call today for a free consultation on how much your credit card debt can be reduced. Don't wait. Find out how much money you could be saving today. Call 800-768-4153. That's 800-768-4153. Ah, great. There's your friends. But who's that with them? That's not you. That's Todd. He's just like you. Only funny and better looking. 
and more, well, Todd. But unlike you, Todd is in the front row singing, if that's what you'd call it. And he takes photos suitable for framing every time. The life you were meant to live. Caesars, Atlantic City. Technology can hold you back or set you free. Toshiba, the laptop expert, designs laptops to work the way you do. Welcome back to Big East Network Basketball. The Robert Morris Colonials and the Pitt Panthers tied at 23. It's the Panthers who have had to claw back in it after the Colonials built an early lead, and they've done so, Mark, because of the three ball. Well, and Ashton Gibbs in particular knocking down the long range shot. That one was uncontested. This one from Jermaine Dixon with a hand in his face. And then watch this shot. That's with a hand in his face almost on the bench for Robert Morris as Ashton Gibbs and now pit four for seven from behind the arc. And you can see the improvement here in Ashton Gibbs. More minutes and an expanded game and has really paid dividends for the Panthers and head coach Jamie Dixon. Jermaine Dixon hits the first two Panthers take the lead 24 to 23. We've talked a good deal of, about things from the Robert Morris perspective as you frequently do with the underdog. What do the Panthers need to do especially defensively here. Well, I think they really got to clean up their on ball pressure and denial. And Cron Abraham has proven himself to be a dynamic offensive weapon. Cut down on his touches. Deny him the basketball. And the best defender Jermaine Dixon matched up with number four Cron Abraham right now. Lead is two here for the Panthers. Crowd starting to get into it. There's your matchup. Abraham long three off the screen, and the Colonials retake the lead. A switch off the screen. Nazir Robinson stays behind, doesn't pressure the ball. It's the little things that matter against a good offensive player. Well, that was so deep, you think Robinson thought he was going to pull the trigger from there. He does, and Abraham been a big part of the Colonial success. Watch the defenders in white. Dixon, there's a switch. Look how far Nazir Robinson stays back. That's way too far, and that's not Jamie Dixon defense either. Usually you show hard on that screen. Well, how much of the fact that Abraham is Wanamaker shoots off the inbound and hits, the fact that Abraham has shown the ability to get to the basket, blow by some defenders, you're a bigger Robinson on a switch, or you're worried about a guy going by you there? Well, you're certainly worried about it, but bottom line, you've got to take away the three first. You've got help off the dribble. Lead is one for the Panthers. Jones drives in, misses the shot, and the Panthers control the rebound. The other thing Robert Morris has done very well in this half, transition defense. And Jermaine Dixon hits the three-pointer. And Wait a minute, now the officials getting together to discuss something here. Yeah, they're going to want to review this and see if this was a three or a two. And right away, the decision's made by the officials, and Let's take a look at it. You're going to see what the officials are seeing right now. Hard to tell from that angle. That is hard to tell. Watch his left foot. Left-hander always leads with the left foot. Steps in right there. Again, going to be difficult to tell from that angle. Let's watch from here. Watch his left foot. Lefty leads with the left foot. Looks like he's behind. Yeah. That would extend the lead to four. And now here again, we've talked about things from both teams' perspective. Here the Panthers clearly coming off the win. You know, they struggled. They lost four or five. Impressive game against Seton Hall. You want to maintain that impressive uh, level of play. You got West Virginia coming up. If you're the Colonials, is this the time as a coach of a, of a team like this that you're worried about, uh-oh, between now and halftime, you might get blown out of the gym here? Well, whenever you play against Pitt here, where they win like every game, it's like the Globetrotters <laughs> against the Washington, whoever they were. Generals. The Washington Generals. You know, you're always worried about that in this type of a game. 
But so far, Robert Morris has competed very, very well. And you can see the Panthers' next two home games. Salty competition, number four, West Virginia, number five, Villanova. There's both those, those teams going at it tonight down in Morgantown. Russell Johnson steps into the three, off the mark. Long rebound pulled down by Ashton Gibbs. Wanamaker didn't like it, so they reset. But Gary McGee was wide open, simply not throwing him the ball down low. Dixon turnaround jump shot short. Brad Wanamaker rebound. Doesn't get the roll, and the rebound pulled away by Robinson. Abraham left open three-pointer on the way. Karan Abraham is on fire for the Colonials. He has 14. Now remember, this is a Robert Morris team that won the Northeast Conference Championship a year ago without that guy. He's right. only a freshman, Karan Abraham. And now we're going to have a block or a charge call. Looks like a block call. And it's going to be on Belton Jones. No, it's uh, N. Wigway they're going to call. Well, there's the contact right there before Wanamaker runs into the help side defender. So for N. Wigway, that is his third personal. So the senior likely to get a seat in the bench as well, although staying in the game for now. Wanamaker, a 71% free throw shooter, hits the first and now. And Wigway goes to the bench, and Brad Peel, the freshman, comes in. Along with Gary Wallace, as Rob Robinson also goes to the bench. Brad Wanamaker coming off one of his best offensive efforts of the season. 13 points, 7 assists, 6 rebounds versus Seton Hall. The pitch scored 83 points in that game. He does a little bit of everything, Brad Wanamaker. You look up for 12 points, 6 yeah. rebounds, 4 assists. I mean, very well-rounded play. Very much a team guy, a Jamie Dixon type guy. Abraham thought about it again. Johnson shot off the mark. Rebound by Dixon. Ashton Gibbs on the bench for the Panthers. on the shot clock. Woodall, two-point guard. Red shirt freshman surveying things. Eight on the shot clock. For Jermaine Dixon, there he is. Long three. No good, and Abraham gets the rebound. And he's fouled by Jermaine Dixon. So I, I guess they're going to say, I, I, I beg your pardon. I, I, they're just going to say Dixon batted out of bounds. How about Karan Abraham, the little guy getting the rebound? Now, Jermaine Dixon, number 24 in white, throws up number four in blue. That's the key matchup to watch. Jermaine Dixon won't be helping off of anybody. He just wants to get up and deny that guy the ball. Foul. And they didn't Fish call it. it. No, they didn't call it. Abraham, some contact as he let go of that three. And if you, was Wanamaker going, kicking out to Woodall, his three-pointer. No good, and Peel gets the rebound. You want to talk about some defensive props for Dixon. Held Jeremy Hazell averaging 23 a game to yeah. two points for Seton Hall last game out. So you know he can defend. Now, Jeremy Hazell was coming off some big scoring games. And Jones draws the foul off the high hedge. 340 remaining. Robert Morris hanging in down three to the 23rd ranked Panthers. Any wallet can hold your money, but only one can actually manage it, help you save it, remind you when you're getting low on it, even easily move it from one place to another. Best of all, this is one wallet you'll never lose. Introducing the virtual wallet from PNC, a high-definition online view of your money. PNC, leading the way. Need a better battery? Get an interstate battery. 
outrageously dependable. So they had an interstate. CTS Sports Sedan. One of car and driver's 10 best for the third year in a row. Visit CadillacTriState.com to find a dealer near you. We've secretly replaced these diners AT&T smartphones with Verizon smartphones. Let's see what happens. Where are all my apps? I don't know. This download is taking forever. Is that right? What is this? Where's my cool phone? So, don't dumb down your smartphone. Choose the nation's fastest 3G network. Oh boy, it was just an experiment. When you compare, there's no comparison. AT&T, a better 3G experience. Buy any smartphone after mail-in rebate and get any messaging phone free after mail-in rebate. At the Peterson Event Center, many of the Panthers faithful stunned that Robert Morris Colonials within three points of their 23rd ranked Panthers. All season long, Champion Apparel will be showcasing the tradition and history of the Big East Conference. Tonight, let's take a look at the Panthers under head coach Jamie Dixon. Six consecutive NCAA appearances, a 9-6 and six record. The Elite Eight appearance a year ago, almost a Final Four. Scotty Reynolds had something to say about that. 31-5, and five, school best record a season ago. Why have they been so successful under this man, Jamie Dixon? Everybody knows of his association with Ben Halland, but what they don't know is his association with Riley Wallace, where they overachieved at Hawaii, where Jamie was the assistant. And then also, the job that he does as an assistant with Ben Halland at UC Santa Barbara and Jerry Pym, who's a Hall of Fame coach. Champion, it's how you play. Ashton Gibbs the rebound for the Panthers. Up three with just over three minutes remaining in this first half. Ripped away, Gary Wallace. That is just active help defense by Robert Morris. That is pitch style defense. Freshman Brad Peel misses and battled for out of bounds will remain Colonials basketball with exactly three minutes remaining. It is interesting to see, you know, the scrapping, the, the defense, the fight, how much these two programs, at least in style of play, mirror each other. Well, Mike Rice is kind of a hybrid. He's got a lot of Jamie Dixon in him, but also he was an assistant at St. Joe's as well. And you can see some Phil Martelli, especially on the offensive end. But defensively, these teams are absolute mirror images in their man to man. I was talking to Mike about that. He's been at uh, various stops in Marquette. He's had a very active career. And he said he tried to take a little bit from each of them, but as you mentioned, the defense is so similar. Well, for Jamie, he got the practice habits and consistency. Elton Jones, long jump shot. It is good. It's a three pointer, and we are tied again. Well, Colonials, don't, they don't want to go away. It's the perfect scenario for an upset for Robert Morris. I mean, this is a bigger game for Robert Morris than it is for Pitt, but it's becoming a very big game for everybody right now. A great soaring follow by Gilbert Brown. Talked about the athleticism there. And he's been up and down scoring, but he brings such energy when he uses that athleticism. The Colonials, the lead is just two here for the Panthers. Well, Abraham's wide open on the wing. I didn't recognize it. Rebound pulled down by Dixon. Good rebounding guard for the Panthers. And Dixon and Wanamaker. Well, with the loss of, of Blair, that's so critical to this team to have the guards contribute that way. Dixon another three-pointer, and Mike Rice wants a timeout. Not happy that they did not get out defensively, and Karan Abraham getting an earful from head coach Mike Rice. Well, Dixon just wide open, and a defensive miscue right there. We've talked about the effective defense of Robert Morris, but a complete breakdown. You don't even see a blue jersey in the picture. Look how open he is right there. 
And from Mike Rice's reaction, it looks like Braun Abraham, the freshman, may have had a slight brain cramp, and yes. that often happens to freshmen in big games. It does. And Jermaine Dixon, you know, here's a guy just 37% from the floor, 23% from three, and, and maybe a little early in the game to call that a big three-pointer, but it does give him a little breathing room. One of those guys that just seems to be able to hit shots when they matter the most for the Panthers throughout his two seasons here. Well, he also makes defensive stops for them. I mean, this, this ball club lost in South Florida, and South Florida is doing a great job right now. But Jermaine Dixon would have matched up better with Dominique Jones than anybody. They really missed his defense that in that game, and they miss his defense a lot whenever he's out. Jones, 37 points in that upset win for the Bulls, who had won four in a row before being knocked off by Notre Dame and played a tough game against the Irish there, losing by just three. Beat Georgetown, too. Stan Heath doing a great job with that program. So the lead is five for the Panthers. And ripped away by J.J. Richardson, who's checked into the game for the Panthers. Gibbs left open for three, shot off the mark. Soaring in was Wanamaker to keep it alive. Well, there's those little things that Brad Wanamaker brings to the table, willing to rebound as a perimeter player. Gilbert Brown left open for three, shot off the mark. Jones taps to Abraham. And Robinson fouled as he went to the basket by Gilbert Brown. Oh, what a pass by Kron Abraham there in the open court. As we look at the shot here, he goes up. Watch Kron Abraham as he passes this ball. Great job by Wanamaker keeping the ball alive. So we've seen hustle plays for each team. And free throw off the mark here for Rob Robinson, who has really struggled from the line, just a 35% free throw shooter. Peel out and Josiah Whitehead back into the lineup for the Colonials. It's one of two and it's a bargain when you're a 35 percent shooter. <laughs> it's a moral victory right there. The lead at four. And each team figures to get one more possession. You can see the differential about 13 14 seconds between game clock and shot clock. Gilbert Brown, the finger roll, and the finish. And the lead at five, down in Morgantown with 7.34 remaining. West Virginia not going away, and Scotty Reynolds now up to 13 points. He's such a great leader for Jay Wright. Talk about Villanova, they've got a lot of seasoned guys, and many of them have been to the Final Four last year. Lead at six, Abraham in, acrobatic shot, Whitehead with the rebound, Lock. goes inside, travel call with .9 seconds remaining. And J.J. Richardson doing a nice job defensively, wanted to tell you what's coming up at halftime. We'll take a look at the four Big East teams ranked in the top 10 in the country, top 25 scores, highlights and statistics. As we take a look at the first half of this game, in case you're just joining us, uh, the Colonials really doing a great job hanging around with the Panthers in this crosstown rivalry game. Brown inbounds, batted away, and that will do it. The end of the half, and it's just a six-point lead for the Panthers. Mike Rice has to be pretty pleased that his team's hanging around. Jamie Dixon may be happy that his team played better as the half wore on. Uh, Robert Morris with solid defense throughout this first half and pit. Go-to guys like Wanamaker, Gilbert Brown, and Ashton Gibbs came through. Well, these two teams we talked about it. The players know each other in the summer league, some from growing up. Jamie Dixon happy with the way his team maybe finished this first half, up six as they head to the half. the Harris Halftime Show. We welcome you back inside our Midtown Manhattan studios. Gary Apple sitting alongside Tim Welsh, the former Providence coach, Charles Smith, former Big East Player of the Year. Game we're watching here on SNY. It's Providence up by uh, Pittsburgh, I should say, up by six at the half over Robert Morris. And uh, they trailed for much of that first half, Charles. I mean, you played in many of these uh, cross-city rivalry 
games, uh, Pittsburgh came out a little bit sluggish. Yeah, they came out a little uh, sluggish for sure. You know, this is not West Virginia where it's called the backyard brawl. I guess the inner city would say it's a front yard brawl because uh, Pittsburgh is not playing on their top game. And you, when you look at Robert Morris, they came with a lot of energy. Uh, they're not afraid. They're actually attacking them as if they belong. On the flip side, as you mentioned, Tim, as we were watching this game, this is uh, a coach's nightmare for Jamie Dixon, but he got tremendous guard play in that first half. Well, this is what happens when you play these games in the first week of February. These games are hard enough in November when you're playing Robert Morris, but in the first week of February, in the middle of the Big East, you wake up with a stomach ache, a headache, everything. But thank God for Jamie, the two guards have played very, very well, but their defense is in shoddy at best. Robert Morris shooting almost 50% from the floor. Ashton Gibbs had 13 in that opening half. Jermaine Dixon had 15, so that backcourt, as I do my math here, uh, combining for 28 of the 39 points. And as you mentioned, uh, Robert Morris shot it very well. They've got a freshman really running the show there. A Abraham, who got off very quickly and sort of uh, no fear when you we talk about a frosh there, not used to this difficult environment, uh, uh, Big East school. He's sort of uh, no conscience out there. He's a Jersey kid. He's not afraid of anything. <laughs> he's from Patterson. But Mike Rice had plays with no fear either. He's a terrific basketball coach. When he played at Fordham, he was a no-nonsense, in-your-face type guard. And he has his basketball team playing that way. Look for them to be in the NCAA tournament again this year. Probably they're on the top, uh, top of their league. But Pitt better be careful tonight. Pittsburgh, 27-0 uh, all-time against uh, Robert Morris looking to make it 28 and 0 tonight as we head for break and get it to six point game at the half Pittsburgh has the lead when we come back we'll check in on the game of the night in the conference West Virginia entertaining Villanova highlights of that one on the way and the new rankings came out today what about Syracuse what about Georgetown where are they amongst the nation's elite we'll have that much more when we come back on the Harris halftime show. For Jay Wright, big bounce back game for Villanova so far. Looks like they're going to pull away with it. Nice effort down to Morgantown. Under three minutes to go in that game. It's uh, uh, Villanova in the lead right now. So we head for break here. It's halftime at the Peterson Event Center. It's Pittsburgh leading Robert Morris by a half dozen. We'll come back with more from our Midtown Studios on the Harris Halftime Show in a moment. Welcome back to Big East Network Basketball at the Peterson Event Center. The Pitt Panthers leading the Robert Morris Colonials by a score of 39 to 33. If you're just joining us, you missed a good 20 minutes of basketball. Well, Cron Abraham right there knocking down the three, and Jamie Dixon cannot be pleased with the three ball defense. Robert Morris, five for 10, and likewise, Ashton Gibbs answers the call. Pitt, six for 14 from three. So in the locker room at halftime, if you're Jamie Dixon and Mike Rice, who play mirror image defense, the thing you're preaching to your team, pressure, pressure, pressure on the perimeter. Challenge every shot from deep. And if you're just joining us, we talked about the familiarity of these two programs. Mike Rice coached under Jamie Dixon for one year. Players knowing each other, growing up together, also knowing each other from summer league ball because the campus is just about 15, 20 miles apart here in Pittsburgh. So a lot of familiarity with these two teams as Wanamaker comes up with a steal for the Panthers. Panthers closing out the first half strong. Colonials led much of the first half of this game. And both these teams have played all man-to-man -man all night long. The Wanamaker off the curl. The hesitation there, not taking that shot. If you're a coach, is that a shot you'd like to see him take there? Or, I mean, the Panthers are so unselfish offensively, you know? Well, and they're really trying to move this defense around. They're trying to get to and fro offensively. Take a look at Pitt. Nice entry pass inside. And McGee able to finish for the Panthers, and the lead is up to eight. Well, Jamie Dixon really challenged his team to get the ball down to Gary McGee in previous games to open the half. Right there, McGee gets a touch. And you think with a big size advantage, they'd go to him off, and that's his first bucket of the game. And Jones called for the charge. Wanamaker draws it. And Jamie Dixon really likes that defense. We talked about the familiarity. Those two grew up with each other, so maybe that happened on the playground back in Philly at some point. Yeah, they'll be talking about that and texting <laughs> each other about that play after the game. And Jamie Dixon has to be pleased with the defensive intensity early. Man, he's intense coming out this second half. He understands how important this game is, although it doesn't mean anything in the Big East. 
But from a seeding perspective in the NCAA tournament, this is a game that Pitt can ill afford to lose. And McGee with a jam. And Mike Rice wants a timeout. The Panthers lead up to 10 here at the Peterson Event Center. I've never been all that great with my money, probably because I've never had much. But now that I'm making more, it's time to be a little smarter about how I manage it. With the calendar, I can schedule all my payments, so when funds are low, Danger Days help me stay out of the red. I can also transfer money with just a click and a drag. So maybe I'm better with money than I thought. Introducing the virtual wallet from PNC, a high-definition online view of your money. PNC, leading the way. Enjoy a complete seafood dinner for two for just $29.99 at Red Lobster. With fresh salads and biscuits, your choice of entrees, and an appetizer or a dessert to share. And soon at Red Lobster. Do you owe $10,000 or more in income tax to the IRS or state? Call today for a free consultation on how much your tax debt can be reduced. Don't wait. Find out how much money you could be saving today. Call 800-742-8604. I see you have the Verizon network. Yeah. You know, if you had AT&T, you'd have the nation's fastest 3G network. And you'd be able to download songs faster, download videos faster. And you could talk and surf the web at the same time. You got a little map in your suit. When you compare, there's no comparison. AT&T, a better 3G experience. Buy any smartphone after mail-in rebate and get any messaging phone free after mail-in rebate. The Rumors. The trades, the free agents. Kevin Burkhardt has the latest on the Mets winter workings, shaping your 2010 Mets roster with exclusive interviews, insider info, and special guest analysis on all the Mets offseason moves. Plus, the latest news from around the league all winter long. Mets Hot Stove, Thursday at 7, only on SNY. Get your New York sports here. The Oakland Zoo looking on, and uh, the student section known for their rowdiness here, and they had something to cheer about here with two quick baskets for Gary McGee. Well, Gary McGee has a size advantage down low, and Pitt has decided to go to the big guy. You know what, throughout this season, as he played behind Juan Blair, you say, if there's a guy that can just catch it, he's learned to do that, then if he can just go finish the simple plays, he becomes a key element to the future success of this program. Big, strong, physical player, the junior seeing Significant action for the first time in his career. Scoreless in the first half has the only four points that anybody scored here in the second half. The lead up to 10. They're just smothering defense by Pitt. Tough shot by Abraham off the mark. Want to make a rebound. Well, that was great defense. Robinson handles, has it blocked away, gets it back, and finishes. This year, Robinson extends the lead to 12. And McGee on both ends of the court. The block of Elton Jones. Boy, Pitt is down in a defensive stance and ready to play here in the second half. This is the help side defense coming across right there. Gary McGee with the rejection. Just watch the activity of the white jerseys. Robinson trying to go to work on McGee. And another block by Gary McGee. And Jermaine Dixon hits the two in the lead just like that. Up to 14, 47, 33. Gary McGee flexing some muscle in the paint. Boy, he has just turned the tide of this game completely, almost single-handedly. The left-handed layup and a nice job by Ken Wigway. I was just going to say, when was the last time that Robert Morris was able to turn a corner and make a play? They finally do on that possession. The credit the defense of Pitt. First field goal in five and a half minutes thanks to that Panthers defense. And McGee stripped down low as he was fed again by Wanamaker. And the reason he stripped, 
brought the ball down. The big fella, if he could just learn to catch, keep it high, and finish. But he brought the ball down where all the munchkins roam, and they were able to tip it out of bounds. <laughs> The inbound to McGee. I'm trying to remember where the Munchkins went. <laughs> Was it ne no? No, it's not Neverland. That's another fairy tale. Munchkinland. Munchkinland. Oh, yeah. thank you. All right, there you have it. Gibbs stripped by Abraham. And the finish, no, but a chance for Gary Wallace to shoot two free throws. Technically, there were some Munchkins in Oz as well. <laughs> We don't want to forget that being politically correct. <laughs> no, that's no, that's true. Thank you very much, Oz, as well. Yes. <laughs> as uh, Wallace steps to the line, a 78% free throw shooter, and misses the first. You know, sometimes when you're Robert Morris, and this is Mike Rice and his team, their opportunity to play at Pitt, their crosstown rival, you play a very good first half. You kind of take a deep breath. In some ways, you got to guard against being satisfied with that 20-minute performance. And oftentimes, young players in particular, and Robert Morris has some of those, kind of take that deep breath and you lose your momentum. Yeah, before you can inhale again, they've cut off your oxygen. Exactly and that's, right. Uh, what the Panthers have done here early in this second half. Twelve on the shot clock. Oh, beautiful feed by Wanamaker. No look pass to Robinson, who's fouled, and he'll shoot two free throws. Pitt is an attack mode. Brad Wanamaker right there off the dribble penetration. When you think of Pitt offense here in the second half, there's the penetration, getting into the gap, penetrating passes down low to Gary McGee, and that time off the dribble. And then we were talking about, as mentioned to you, is uh, not a very good free throw shooter. Is this year Robinson just 44%? You know, Wanamaker coming off a, a, a screen and not taking a shot. One of the first things Jamie Dixon talks about after every game, how many baskets, how many assists did we have? Extremely high assist to basket ratio because his team is so unselfish on offense. Now that's the Jamie Dixon win. That's part of that Jerry Pym influence on his career at UC Santa Barbara. Jerry Pym was a guy that really believed in great passing teams at Utah and Santa Barbara back in the 70s and the early 80s. And in this high weave, and it's out of bounds, lost by Ed Wigway. And the Panthers have taken control of the game, up by 13 over Mike Rice's pesky Colonial squad. You have dreams for your children. Don't let times like these stand in the way of them. Protect your family with the gift of financial security, backed by the highest possible ratings for financial strength. New York Life, the company you keep. Check it. an interstate battery outrageously dependable so they had an interstate now more than ever you want to keep your loved ones safe and secure give them the gift of financial security from new york life we've been protecting families for over 164 years new york life the company you keep uh look someone is going on your shopping spree and they're not buying you a thing and they're going to look stunning or as one man will whisper, sublime. And people will stare as this not you, fresh from the Roman baths, sips extra bubbly champagne. And when they finally retire to luxury slab, they'll enjoy something even bubblier. The life you were meant to live, Caesars Atlantic City. Every year he gives me a box of chocolates. This year, there's nougat. And every year he picks the fanciest greeting card. And that's why every year the love we share grows like... Mom is so moved on. With smart notifications, simple navigation, and killer looks. The Palm Pre Plus is the first 3G smartphone smart enough to keep up with Mom. And the perfect Valentine's gift. Just $149.99 on the network with the most 3G coverage. Verizon. 
15-51 remaining second half at the Peterson Event Center. The Panthers have stretched the lead to 13. McGarry McGee didn't score in the first half. He's taken control early here, Coach. Well, Pitt obviously wanted to get the ball down to the big guy, and when he can catch and finish like that, he becomes an extra weapon for this Pitt offense. And doing it on both ends of the floor as well. Well, in the outlet pass right there, Gary McGee really giving this ball club a lift here in the second half. Well, tonight's Big East Coaches Spotlight is brought to you by Oppenheimer Funds. Let's take a closer look at Coach Jamie Dixon. Great success here for the Panthers, to say the very least. Well, seventh season, obviously the first six going to the NCAA tournament. Consecutive 20 victory seasons for six consecutive years, plus 10 or more victories in the Big East for six consecutive years. That might be the biggest number of all in this conference. Remarkable consistency out of the Panthers. McGee looking to go to work again and fouled and will go to the free throw line. And we you saw there the, the you know the three coaches in a very short time under head coach Jamie Dixon and some of these guys going on to to have uh, their own programs to manage. Well, Barry Rorson did a great job of recruiting the New York area for Jamie Dixon. Of course, Mike Rice, we see the the fruits of his labor at Robert Morris had the privilege of calling the championship game of the Northeast Conference last year when Robert Morris hit that last second shot to knock off Mount St. Mary's. Great ball game. 48-46, Colonials earning their first NCAA bid since 1992 with that victory and looking to get back there for a second consecutive year under head coach Mike Rice. But trailing right now the Pitt Panthers by 15 after leading for a good portion of the first half. Ooh, and the extra pass inside, Green can't handle. And let's take a look at the score down in Morgantown. It is a final, so Villanova goes on the road. Scotty Reynolds finishes with 21 points. They win by seven, and here's the updated standings. Boy, Jay Wright is so good at bringing his team back off of a loss. Just lost to Georgetown and frankly got hammered. And then they go to Morgantown and win. That is called toughness by Scotty Reynolds and Jay Wright's ball club. Robinson missed and uh, a foul as McGee and two Colonials go for the rebound. And you remember the days of, you know, everyone talks about heavyweight prize fights. You remember the days of Ali and Frazier and Foreman, those guys fighting. That's the way it is with the Big You get to this point of the season in the Big East, they're, they're slugging it out for, for standings and for possible NCAA seedings. And you see all these highly ranked teams going at it. And it's so much fun to watch these, especially these closing weeks of the conference. Oh, it's the best conference in the country, period. And there, there's, there's no argument to that. We talk about the depth of talent, the number of teams ranked in the top 25, four out of the top eight, because we have a technical foul. Mike Rice was working that official pretty hard. And Dallas Green had picked up his fourth foul, and Mike Rice uh, Picking up the technical, so Ashton Gibbs will shoot for the Panthers. It's amazing how when the calendar turns to February, the volume of technicals dials up as well. I've done three games in the last six days. Every game has had a technical foul. Every single one of them. Before that, none. Is that the pressure building oh, up yeah. as you get closer to Absolutely. the end of the season? Absolutely. It's like that sprinter, that last burst to just try to win. Anything they can do to win, dive across the finish line. It's the same competitive nature. And Gibbs hits them both. Mike Rice with a technical foul on the two free throws. He's his team down by 17. And McGee goes back to the line now to shoot his second free throw. Mike Rice also sent a message to his team. Look, we haven't competed very well here in the second half. Let's let's pick this thing up. And Wigway trying to get into the lane. He draws the foul and we go to the line. Brad Wanamaker didn't like the call, but uh, and Wigway will shoot too. And Mike Rice, you know, he talked about when I saw him in practice earlier, you know, some of the guys and, and you know, beginning to embrace their roles. And then Wigway's one of those guys. A, more of a perimeter shooter now. He's playing to his strengths, a strong guard who gets into the lane and, and does this very well. Shoots free throw, 73% free throw shooter. So uh, adapting his game to, to what's best for the team. Uh, Mike Rice, what I'm very impressed with him as a head coach and as an assistant before that is his ability to evaluate talent 
and especially at the Robert Morris level, you're not gonna get guys that can do everything. You've gotta fit different types of talents together, and he does that very, very well, now competing again for the Northeast Conference Championship this year. Well, we talked about Abraham. There's a guy that, because he's 5'9", and he's a two guard, he's not a point guard, he slips through the cracks, and Mike Rice is able to identify that, and you go up and down the roster, and there's, there's similar stories like that all throughout the roster. Every guy, and it's about fitting those parts together. Gibbs nails a three-pointer for the Panthers, and there was never any question about this guy's abilities. It's just that quick release. That's what we talked about in the, in the pregame. Going out there, watching this kid shoot 150 shots before the game ever starts. Lead is up to 18. Three-pointer by Johnson, missed. Rebound by Enwigwe, battled for with Gibbs. They're gonna call Gibbs for the foul. Well. If you're Jamie Dixon, I think you have to be pleased with the way your team has responded to a sluggish start, especially coming off that big win against Seton Hall. And then looking ahead, obviously, he's right in the middle of conference play. You want to keep that momentum going, don't you? Well, absolutely. And right now, Pitt's doing it with their defense. At the end of the first half, stretching it into the second half, we saw the three-point shooting. But believe me, Jamie Dixon is much more concerned about his ab team's ability to defend the knockdown threes. And Pointer on the way, no good by Nwigwe. Dante Taylor, who checked in for Gary McGee, you saw him getting a good crowd from the hand, or a good hand from the crowd, I should say, uh, pulls down the rebound. Taylor, the McDonald's All-American freshman. Now Dante Taylor, a guy with big upside. Once he learns how to play within this system, the thing about Jamie Dixon players, they continually get better year in, year out. So you see, see a guy like Aaron Gray when he came in as a freshman and then winding up in the NBA. Remarkable. The Brown jumper off the mark. There's Taylor with the rebound. Goes up with a jump hook. Missed it. And Wanamaker is able to pull down the rebound. Talked about what a fine rebounding guard he was and just kind of overpowered Gary Wallace there for the rebound. Gary Wallace is second. No substitutions. Karan Abraham. Back in as Wallace and Peel head to the bench. Uh, Dante Taylor a little hobbled there. His left ankle, number 11 in white. You see him ginger on that left ankle. He got that rebound. I wonder why he faded away. And the reason was he stepped on somebody's ankle. He was off balance. Want to make her in and out. And rebound battled for, and it's out of bounds. And Taylor hustling and. There's again those small hustle plays and we're beginning to see more and more Jamie Dixon basketball as this game wears on. But watching him in high school, Dante Taylor, if there's one constructive critical comment I'd make, he hadn't learned how to play hard yet. He was just better than everybody. And at this level, if you're not an NBA level player as a freshman, like maybe a Lance Stevenson, for example, you would better bring your A game every day and Dante Taylor learning to do that. Wanamaker, the rebound and the finish. He has seven. Mike Rice wants another timeout. The lead is up to 20. We talked about the importance of coming out strong in the second half. Colonials just barraged by Jamie Dixon's Panthers. Now, and the rebound story has really been what it's all about here in the second half. Pitt has just gotten after the offensive rebounds. And Rob, you and I talked about whenever you play up from a non-power six to a power six, you look at two stats, turnovers and rebounds. And right now, Pitt exposing Robert Morris on the offensive glass. At what point, if you're coaching in a game like this now, from the Colonials' point of view, do you just want to finish the game playing hard and, and walk out of here feeling like you played a good game? Because they played such a good game for the first 14 or 15 minutes, really most of the first 20 minutes. That, that's a great question. And, and you know what? I'm not sure I have a great answer for you. Because I've been in this situation against UConn one night where we had two conference games coming up later in the week. And I decided I'm going to go to my bench early if we get behind. We got behind. I went to the bench early. I mean, we got beat by a 1,000. You know, now we did go on the road and split. But I'll tell you what, especially when you're playing a crosstown rival as a coach, you can take a lot of heat for making that decision. Well, Mike Rice talked about it. He said, hey, listen, the, the, the important games, yeah, we want to come out here. We want to play well, want to play hard. Important games are the conference games, the two coming up. Last year they lost to Pitt, went right back into conference, won their next two games. So. That is, again, you know, that's what gets them to the NCAA. They're not going to get to the NCAA tournament in an at-large bid by beating the Panthers no, in this game. No, no chance. 
And so you've got to weigh that a little bit. Now, the good news is Robert Morris is a deep team, so he can use a lot of different players and not lose a whole lot. Woodall, the floater, and a beautiful finish lead up to 22. Well, this is the kind of game that Pitt needed. They played very well against Seton Hall, and now really exerting their will late in the first half of the second half against a good Robert Morris basketball team. And Johnson fouled by Wanamaker with 12.04 remaining. 28-5 run over the last 10 minutes of this game. They've turned in the last 10 minutes of the game a one-point deficit into a 22-point lead. That's impressive no matter who you're playing. And Johnson hits the first. Every team goes through a wall. I mean, every team is going to find some hard times throughout the season, and Pitt just went through theirs, and now we're seeing them recover. And that's why Jamie Dixon has been has been so successful. He's a hands-on guy. He's very positive. He develops the off-court relationships in a very unique way. I mean, he spends time. They know that he cares about them. And I was really impressed with the shoot-around today that Jamie Dixon actually had the scout for Robert Morris. Usually that's an assistant coach that does that. He was out there actively coaching the game plan. It was impressive. Well, attention to detail, intensity for some of the reasons that he has been such a successful coach here for the Panthers. Well, Mike Rice talked about the practice preparation, the consistency that he learned from Jamie Dixon, and his team shows that in their performance tonight. Brown fouled away from the basket, 11-28 remaining, the lead 20 for the 23rd ranked Panthers. In today's markets, how can you get your investments heading in the right direction? At Oppenheimer Funds, our fund manager's perspective on the numbers helps uncover opportunities, no matter which way the markets are moving. Ask your advisor about Oppenheimer Funds. Call your advisor for a prospectus with complete fund information. Read it carefully and carefully consider fund investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. Mutual funds are subject to market risk and volatility. Shares may lose or gain value. Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. Get a partner and become America's best twosome. It was a fabulous tournament. Just fantastic. Lush fairways and greens. And, oh yeah, it's Vegas, baby. And it's the ESPN National Golf Challenge. Overcome a few obstacles. Let's challenge some of the country's best golfers. Unbelievable. Top notch. Pretty good. For more information, log on to ESPNGolf.com. Let it snow, let it snow, let it sleep, freeze, and then let it snow again. And then let it rain, and then let it snow one more time. Offering fully automatic all-wheel drive, Stabilitrack stability enhancement, and traction control. GMC Acadia. Tonight on Geico Sports Night, how Daniel Murphy is going to be coached by an amazing tutor, and the Yankees add yet another outfielder as their quest to replace Johnny Damon continues. Geico Sports Night, 10 and 1. Big East basketball on SNY. Lance Stevenson and the Bearcats start their two game road swing as they battle Jerome Dyson and the Huskies in the Big East game of the week. Cincinnati at UConn, Saturday at noon, only on SNY. Welcome back to the Peterson Event Center, Big East Network Basketball. In case you're just joining us, uh, the folks here at the Peterson Event Center are a lot to cheer about now, but the Colonials led for much of the first half. In fact, led 26-25, thanks in large part to that guy. Yeah, Kron Abraham just went off in the first half. Small stand on the court. A lot of fight in that dog right there. has been shut down here in the second half, and Ashton Gibbs, that feathery touch from downtown. I just love his shot preparation. So quick, concise. Compact. And we take a look at the uh, work of Abraham and Gibbs. The lead now, 59 to 39. Again, Robert Morris led 26 to 25. Abraham on the bench right now as Gilbert Brown getting set to shoot free throws here for the Panthers, whose lead is 20, 59 39, with 11 28 remaining in the second half. He's able to hit the first of the two on a 71% free throw shooter. Oh. 
And Brown gets a roll in the second, and the lead up to 22, 61 to 39. Robert Morris, 16 and 8 at the NEC concert. Crosstown rivals with the Pitt Panthers. Rob King along with Mark Adams bringing you basketball from the Peterson Event Center. If you're a Pitt fan, you're anxious to watch Dante Taylor, number 11 in white there in the paint. See how he handles this playing time opportunity. And he's a guy, McDonald's All-American, with a big upside, learning how to play, learning the system. It was a great opportunity for him to get a lot of quality in-game minutes. He can prove himself for the stretch run. You know, and we talked about how, you know, for, for each coach, kind of an awkward, as uh, Jones called for the travel, kind of an awkward time to have a non-conference game. I was thinking about that driving over here. This is a good opportunity for a guy like Dante Taylor. Playing time harder and harder to come by as the games begin to mean more and more. A chance sort of at the you know, middle of the season to get a reset, a chance to get out there and, and get some more game action. Well, and Gary McGee came out, was able to score the ball on the block, give him a little bit of confidence, and now Dante Taylor gets the same opportunity. But look how far he's catching the ball out. Remember how Gary McGee was catching right around the basket? That's where Dante Taylor has to play lower and learn how to play with more strength. Dixon now 10 in the shot clock, lost the dribble, tried to get the wood all in the cut. And now a held ball. Dante Taylor trying to call a timeout, didn't get it in time. Six seconds left. Possession arrow is in favor of the Panthers. Let's take a look at our Big East leaders, brought to you by PNC, leading the way. Let's take a look at the free throw percentage. Ashton Gibbs with that great stroke. Curry not far behind. Dixon's three, pointer off the mark. Rebound pulled down by the Colonials. That's Josiah Whitehead. Oh, and Tim Abramidis, one of the great three-point shooters in the country. Out of Good. Notre Dame. Good close look by Thompson, Elijah Thompson, the freshman getting some action, and he misses the shot. I'm sorry, Coach. Oh, Tim Abramidis, one of the great three-point shooters at Notre Dame. And, and you look at the, the middle of this conference right now, Georgetown at 7-4, and four, Pitt at 7-4, and four, Louisville at 6-4, and four, Marquette at 6-5, and five, Notre Dame at 6-5. and five. Cincinnati at five and six, South Florida at five and six. Everybody's bunched up there for seeding in the Big East tournament. Critical, but also how many teams to the NCAA tournament? Exactly. And exactly. you've got to make your move now. If you're Notre Dame, you've still got work to do. If you're Marquette, now Marquette, who lost so many games early in the season, now all of a sudden they're winning those close games. So they're putting themselves in position now for, for the dialogue for the NCAA tournament at large as out of the Big East. And Dante Taylor able to draw the foul charge on Josiah Whitehead. So the second free throw missed, but Taylor will have a chance to get right to the line and try to add to this Panthers lead. And that is one of the questions. It's seeding in the Big East tournament. And then also, how many? Last year, we saw three number one seeds out of the Big East Conference. All those teams getting in. Will they get as many in this year? Well, you got to look at Syracuse, yes. Villanova, yes. West Virginia, yes. Georgetown, yes. Pittsburgh, yes. Those five. And then you've got Louisville, Marquette, Notre Dame, Cincinnati, South Florida, I think has Played to be in the conversation in. Sure. right now. They could. And then what about Connecticut? Yeah, they've fallen so far, so fast uh, with Jim Calhoun's sideline. And we wish the best to Jim. Sure. Come back healthy when he's ready to go. Johnson, strong move, can't finish. Taylor rebound, had it batted away. Back to Johnson. Boy, getting ugly in here and now. Finally, Johnson able to finish with a one-handed jam. Scrappy basketball. Well, that's Robert Morris basketball. That's Mike Rice. I admire the way this team competes, and you know, I got to think they're going to be playing for that Northeast Conference Championship again. And they'll probably be here in Pittsburgh again. Home court advantage yep. in the Northeast Conference. You know, you talked about. We talked about earlier the, the you know the heavyweight matchups, the the Villanova West Virginia matchups, and those kind of games. But you know Notre Dame South Florida, how important was that game just a couple days ago? Well, if South Florida wins that game, then all of a sudden you're looking at them and saying, you know what, they're, they're probably going to get a bid. But Notre Dame played great defense in that game, which they haven't been known for their solid defense before. They certainly have improved since Mike Gray went to those early morning practices. Brown can't finish, and Wigway the other way for Robert Morris. Pull up jump shot too strong by Gary Wallace. And 
breakaway. A nice, strong move to the basket. Yeah, Tandy Dixon doesn't like that. That's way too easy. That's, that's not pit defense right there. The lead down to 19 for the Colonials, and you were at that that game, and of course, a couple years ago, uh, as we take a look, uh, one more look at the action here. Remember how active the defense was earlier, guys in help side position. Look at all the white jerseys that basically just give up the deuce right there. And you mentioned that you called that game last year, the, the Colonials game against Mount St. Mary's, and uh, and obviously it was the year before. Uh, you know, Robert Morris hoping to get back to the NCAA tournament. They lose. They wind up in the NITs, and uh, I mean. Such great excitement. The NEC, you're only going to get one team yeah. in. You know you're only going to get one team in. And uh, take a look at some of the longest winning streaks in the country. How about Robert Morris in there with some with some pretty big names? Yeah, Robert Morris with nine in a row. Murray State, tell you, Billy Kennedy in the Ohio Valley Conference doing a great job with that ball club. De Niro and Thomas and Sienna Fran McCaffrey. Sienna will go to Butler in the bracket busters. That is a great matchup. And no doubt. Sienna has the most to gain in bracket buster because with that, they don't have a signature win. If they can knock off the number 15 team in the country, Butler, then all of a sudden Sienna now becomes, if they don't win the MAAC, now they may get in that large bid, which will affect the Big East. Right, that's right. And all the power of six conferences that are looking to get as many teams in as possible. And it's such a great time of year when you think about how how important the games get. They loom so large this time of year. You, you talked about Marquette as Robinson goes in and doesn't get the roll. And, and Marquette, you know, finishing strong and how much the, the tournament looks into that. They had those losses early. Now they've come back and they're one of those teams that are hot. The, the, the tournament seems to like to invite those teams that are playing well at the end of the year. Well, part of the selection committee's evaluation is your last 12 games. And they look at that hard. I've actually served on that mock selection committee. And you look at RPIs, you look at the last 12 games, you look at quality wins, all those things go into your decision-making process. And Wigway's two-pointer cuts it to 17. The Colonials are putting themselves pretty well here at the Peterson Event Center. Yeah, they're really competing well. Listen, they're probably not going to end up winning this game, although they may make a run here, you never know. But I think the first half showed the quality of basketball. This, this little run right here they're putting on, doing a great job with it. Wanamaker the rebound and then lost it. Wallace looking to run. The extra pass and the finish by Enwigwe. Beautiful play by the Colonials. This is why Robert Morris is a championship level team. And this game is separated by about seven minutes right now where Pitt played extremely well. Robert Morris struggled, but Robert Morris now with that man, Mike Rice, and his winning will Right there, Robert Morris just doing a great job in the open court. Very impressed with this basketball team and their ability to compete. And look at the athletic finish by Nwigwe. Mike Rice has to be happy. Jamie Dixon now has been forced to use a couple quick timeouts, and Mike Rice used a timeout earlier in the half, and you mentioned you know, competing, and you look at what he has done in his third season at Robert Morris. You can't do better than two-time conference coach of the year when you've only been coaching for two years. Yeah, he's a real winner, Mike Rice. He's a blend of Jamie Dixon and Phil Martelli. Those are two great mentors in his career, and it shows to his passion, his competitiveness, and the execution, especially defensively, of this team. They'd love to dig in and play man-to-man -man defense. I love that about Robert Morris. We were lauding the Panthers of maybe prematurely about finishing this game strong. They had the, the good finish to the first half, good beginning here to the second half, and I'm sure Jamie Dixon wants to see this team close, his team close this game out. They want to keep the momentum, beat Seton Hall here, and it's best offensive display of the season. And it's an over and back by Brad Wanamaker. And Brad thought that the ball was uh, hit by one of the colonial defenders. Officials say no. Lead is 15 here at the Peterson Event Center. Enjoy a complete seafood dinner for two for just $29.99 at Red Lobster. With fresh salads and biscuits, your choice of entrees, and an appetizer or a dessert to share. And soon at Red Lobster.
$10,000 or more in credit card debt? Call today for a free consultation on how much your credit card debt can be reduced. Don't wait. Find out how much money you could be saving today. Call 800-768-4153. That's 800-768-4153. Okay, Pixels. IOTV brings people every HD game of the Knicks. Rangers, Nets, Islanders, Devils, Mets, Yankees, Giants, and Jets. So, can we all agree not to play favorites? I all suppose. Right, sure. I guess so. Great. Let's shake on it. All right, let's do it. Yes! <laughs> no one delivers more New York sports in HD. IOTV brings you an extraordinary HD experience free. Now Optimum Online customers have another great benefit. Unlimited access to the new Newsday.com at no additional cost. Local news, sports, entertainment, traffic, and weather. You can even customize it and make it your very own. A $20 a month value for Optimum Online customers at no additional cost. Just go to Newsday.com, sign in, and register today. It's fast and easy. The new Newsday.com. Another exclusive benefit you get with Optimum Online. Just when it looked like Robert Morris is going to be blown out of the Peterson Event Center, an 8-0 run. They've cut the lead back down to 15, 62 to 47. More great Big East Troop action comes your way Saturday, February 13th, and Sunday, February 14th. First on Saturday at noon Eastern, Cincinnati travels to Connecticut. Then on Sunday at noon Eastern, DePaul visits Seton Hall. It's the Big East Game of the Week, only on the Big East Network. Look at that Cincinnati-Connecticut game. We talked about teams, uh, you know, that are fighting for... Both those teams need to get going now. They're, they're out of room now for losing games. Yeah, you don't want to say it's a loser out game, but it's pretty doggone close yeah, it right is. there. I mean, Cincinnati at five and six. Of course, Lance Stevenson, one of the truly gifted freshmen in the country. And Connecticut, you know, Jim Calhoun, who's been ill and has taken a leave of absence. We wish him the best and want him to come back. Of course, that's on his timeline, not ours. But Connecticut now four and seven in conference play. Robinson the miss, good presence inside by McGee, who gets the ball on the other end and will finish. Well, Pitt going back to what worked for them to start the second half, getting the ball to the big guy, Gary McGee down low. Good job running the floor by McGee too, huh? He can run. Missed by Robinson, batted at, kept alive by Belton Jones. Johnson on the move, that shot off to Mark Wanamaker with a rebound. And Gibbs trying to get McGee, and it's off McGee's knee and out of bounds. And that's a bad decision by Ashton Gibbs right there. When we asked him about, Ashton, what do you got to work on on your game? And he said, you know what, decision making. And to give Gary McGee the ball at, you know, 15 feet away from the basket off a bounce pass, that's the decision making I think that Ashton Gibbs was talking to us about before the game. Right. Wait a second longer, let him get let him get uh, himself established in the post, make the easy pass down to him. Sound like you played this game a little bit. <laughs> Abraham fouled as he goes up for the shot and Jermaine Dixon caught there. So Abraham, after that sensational first half, looking for his first points here in the second half. <laughs> Outstanding free throw shooter. Abraham hits the first. 88% leading the Northeast Conference in that department. Well, we talked about Ashton Gibbs, his compact shot. Watch this guy at the free throw line. Just watch his right elbow. Right there. Shoots through the right eye. It's his perfect form. And the lead at 15 as the Colonials continue to hang around. And I suppose, you know, you want real victories, not moral victories, but this is coming close for the Colonials at this stage of the game. Now, this game will make them better, too. When you play up in competition, play as effectively as Robert Morris has, you can gain confidence from this. Double in the post, and Green able to finish, and lead down to 13. Well, I love the fight in this team. They're fun to watch. And, you know, games like this one, Syracuse early on, they got blown out in that game. Penn State, where they played some, some top teams like Appalachian State and others from, from conferences around the country, teams that are, you know, near the top of their conferences from, from, uh, from the mid-majors at, you know, the same sort of neck of the woods that Mike Rice's program uh, dwells in. So they've, 
they've seen a lot of different kinds of teams, and they've seen some of the top teams in the country. Well, and you're going to play some of those top teams, and Mike Rice not afraid to play the pits and Syracuse of the world. I think it shows in their competitiveness and how much they've improved throughout the season. The talk that they're going to head down to Morgantown next year and play West Virginia on the road. More program building fodder for Mike Rice as Gibbs hits the first to two free throws. It helps in recruiting too. And the second. You tell kids, hey, we're going to Syracuse. We're playing a pit. I'll tell you, that makes a difference. Now, you don't want to kill your team doing it. <laughs> right. But it's okay to play a few of them. Abraham gets open for the three, in and out, and McGee able to track down the rebound. Well, Abraham got a pretty good look there. I think Jamie Dixon and his staff can look at the first 10 minutes of the half, say, you know what, we played great defense. Wanamaker for three. I think they're going to look at the last 10 minutes of the half and say, I don't think we played as good a defense there. And Wanamaker caught on the reach in is Belton Jones, his old uh, buddy, is driving to the basket, and he uh, reached up and fouled him, as we mentioned earlier. The two of those grew up together. As McGee heads out, and Dante Taylor getting a chance for some more game action. But there's Wanamaker, and there's Jones. Good pals, and we were talking to Ashton Gibbs, said he's still very good friends with Gary Wallace, one of his best friends, he called him. And Jones misses, Taylor with the rebound. Well, the Green Tree Summer League here is a big deal. Guys from Duquesne, Robert Morris, and Pitt all get together and play each other. There was another team Robert Morris played earlier. Duquesne out of the A-10, shot by Gibbs off the mark. And Wigway looking to push. Now we'll settle as the Panthers do a good job getting back defensively. Ooh, nice move by Dallas Green. I well, beg your pardon, that was uh, Russell Johnson. Jamie Dixon just turns his head. I mean, we didn't see any of that for a long period of time to start the second half. This is a concentration thing for Pitt right now. They're just breaking down defensively. And credit Robert Morris for continuing to play hard and attack. Oh, beautiful job by Jones tracking it down. Long pass up, and Dixon just as nice a job hustling back. Gibbs a long jumper off the mark. Kept alive by Dixon again. Wow. Well, that's leadership right there by Jermaine Dixon. Sprinting back on defense and then getting the loose ball on offense. The hustle play now, the long three and off the mark. Taylor, though, gets the rebound. Now pulled away from him, and you talked about that strength. And in Wigway. Shot off the mark. And things getting a little ragtag now. And Wanamaker will walk it up for the Panthers. You taught, you've stressed defense throughout this, uh, the course of this broadcast here and, and how each coach stresses that. And each coach will be the flat out tell you, if you can't play defense, you're not going to play for us. Yeah, they're both old school guys. If you don't play hard and play defense, you're going to sit. And Brown steps out of bounds as he drove to the baseline. 2.52 remaining. The Panthers up 69 to 53 over Robert Morris. We've got a ton of stuff we've got to pay for. And a few things we want to pay for. On top of it all, we're still trying to put away some money for the future. With the wish list, we can save up for anything we want. And still have enough to cover the day to day. Plus, the savings engine helps our money grow. And that's something we need and want. Introducing the virtual wallet from PNC, a high-definition online view of your money. PNC, leading the way. The most dramatic game in Big East history. It took six overtimes, nearly four hours. It was more than just a game. This was for the ages. So we head to overtime. the excitement at sixovertimes.com. On a Friday in Manhattan, a toothbrush on your chair can mean just one thing. You're invited to a spontaneous weekend excursion. Put it in your pocket and book your trip because you're not going home tonight. You're going to Harris Resort, Atlantic City. The food guy, the gambler, 
the rabbit's foot, and of course, the planner. The whole group will be there. At Era's Resort Atlantic City, everyone plays a part. Party the night away and pamper yourself the next day. Book now at harrisresort.com. Big East Basketball on SNY, your all-access conference pass with over 100 Big East Basketball matchups, including the men's and women's game of the week, plus weekly coaches shows, bringing you an inside look at your favorite Big East teams, and in-depth pre-, half- and post-game coverage from our team of Big East experts for all our primetime conference matchups. SNY, the TV home of the Big East. Get your New York sports here. Tonight's Big East Network game has been brought to you by Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. And by Champion, it's how you play. At the Peterson Event Center, Crosstown Rivals, Pitt and Robert Morris and the Panthers, 23rd ranked in the country, leading by 16. And we take a look at the streaks, 27-0 uh, for the Panthers against Robert Morris. Never lost to an NEC team. The Colonials, by the way, have won nine straight, as we showed you earlier, one of the longer winning streaks in the country. That in some jeopardy here against the Panthers. Elijah Thompson looking for help. Batted out of bounds by Jermaine Dixon. Dixon just intense as we saw in that sequence uh, he mentioned the word leadership and he's provided that for the Panthers and he's definitely the one guy that you want to lock down defender Jermaine Dixon and there he is again every possession a battle a personal battle for Jermaine Dixon of course the brother of Juan Dixon the former Maryland great well credit his defense here in the second half against Karan Abraham, he's been the guy that's been matched up for the large majority of the half. Desperation heave almost drops for Gary Wallace. And now on another end, the other end of block on Russell Johnson. Bob King along with Mark Adams here at the Peterson Event Center. Robert Morris leading for much of the first half up 26 to 25 Pitt threatening to blow him out and then Robert Morris put on a little charge and now it's kind of stayed in that 15 16 17 point range over the last few minutes here uh, Pitt's got to feel very good about how they have rebounded the ball tonight they're plus 12 on the evening we talked about the difference between non power six versus power six turnovers and rebounds are usually the story in that situation Jermaine Dixon gets a nice hand as Chase Adams checks in for him. And I think Jamie Dixon has a good deal of respect for this Robert Morris team. I'm sure he's going to say after the game, hey, you know, we beat a pretty good basketball team tonight. They are good. I'm very impressed with them. I think, you know, when you look at the Northeast Conference, Robert Morris, I believe, by far, is the most athletic team in that conference. The lead for Abraham misses the short jump shot. Wanamaker with another rebound. Adams trying to patiently get the team into the offense. Went to Centenary for three years. Now will launch the long three-pointer and drop it down. Chase Adams. A good athlete, too. We watched him dunk the basketball before the officials came out. In was that impressive? That was impressive. He got way up. Listed at 5'10". He's not 5'10". No, and he's not. And, and uh, he jumped like a guy that's a lot taller than 5'10", that's for sure. 39% shooter from three-point range. That stroke looked good there. And now Russell Johnson will go to the free throw line. 62% free throw shooter. And misses the first. Well, how about the national rankings today? as the Big East with five teams ranked in the top 25. Of course, Pitt at number 23. Four in the top eight. Yeah. And, you know, when you think about South Florida beating two of those teams, and, and you know, you're getting the depth of the conference you talked about, no easy games in the Big East Conference. No. Dwight Miller has checked in, thought about the three-pointer. Freshman now after not playing in any Big East games is 
seen action in the last two Big East games and then tonight. One guys they think has a bright future here for the Panthers down the line. Adams will try another three and hit it again. The crowd loves it and the bench for the Panthers all standing up and cheering as Adams knocked down that three. And he's showing the three to the crowd. <laughs> Dante Taylor soaring to bat it out, but corralled by Robert Morris and Russell Johnson. Thompson kicks out to Midway, his three-pointer off the mark. Miller comes in for the rebound for the Panthers. Well, this is going to end up to be, obviously, a big pit victory. But I think you got to get some credit to Robert Morris. The team came in and, I think, competed extremely well in the first half. But then Pitt re was able to regather especially defensively and dominate this game and Pitt now can keep their momentum the win over Seton Hall now the win over Robert Morris they're back on track and a big one for them coming up Friday against West Virginia for Robert Morris back to NEC play where they have been the dominant team and the conference leaders Jamie Dixon and Mike Rice will meet at center court the two friends and uh, so Pittsburgh getting the win tonight for Jamie Dixon, and that is going to wrap up our coverage of Big East basketball on this night here on SNY, a night in which Villanova and West Virginia got together down in Morgantown. Huge game when it comes to the Big East as uh, they came in the fourth and fifth ranked teams in America. The highlights post-game reaction coming up on Geico Sports Night, as well as the day after the Super Bowl. Kirk Jimenez going to have it all, and it begins right now. Stir